Welcome to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we talk about Elon Musk's plan for the moon takeover by SpaceX and NASA. SpaceX's Starship is set to play a crucial role in the Artemis program, facilitating the human landing system for astronauts from the orbiting Orion spacecraft onto the moon's surface. With Artemis One's successful flyby of the moon and the shakedown cruise for NASA's SLS rocket, SpaceX is focusing on the first test flight of the Starship and Super Heavy launch system. Let's talk a bit about the Artemis rockets. We're all somewhat familiar with the Artemis One, the unmanned SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft test flight. The test of Artemis I has been successful, setting the stage for Artemis II, a replay of Artemis I, likely to happen in 2024. This is a major accomplishment for NASA, but still a test flight for the new equipment. Artemis III is the big show, with NASA expecting to land people on the moon between 2026 and 2028. This mission is challenging due to the need for moving parts from different locations to come together perfectly. The third Artemis flight is similar to the second one, with SLS launching Orion, which takes people to orbit the moon but cannot land. Although Orion lacks a last-mile delivery system, which seems like a mistake, NASA has recently added another spacecraft to the mix, SpaceX. This means that while Orion is intended to carry people through deep space, it is not intended to land them anywhere. Therefore, NASA needs a lander. The idea is to move two of the four Artemis III crew members from Orion to a human landing system, or HLS, that will be waiting for them in lunar orbit. After that, the lander will descend to the moon's surface, where the crew members will spend about five days and then send the HLS back into orbit, switching back to Orion before making a victorious return to Earth. All these led to NASA awarding SpaceX a contract. NASA has announced that the Gateway, a space station for Artemis III, will not be ready for the lunar orbit. SpaceX was awarded the contract to build the human lander for Artemis III, which would carry people and equipment to the moon and back again. The original purpose of the Starship was to get people to Mars and back again, so quick trips to the moon should be no big deal. Elon Musk appears to believe that the Starship is almost ready for final testing at this point, Elon Musk tweeted. Next test is about 20 seconds firing with max oxygen fill to test autogenous pressurization. Possibly one more static fire, and then orbital launch attempt. Elon Musk has appointed SpaceX CEO Gwen Shotwell as the new operations manager for the Starship program at Starbase. Shotwell, known for her pragmatic and methodical approach to aerospace development, is expected to provide a realistic timeline for Starship's successful launch and its reliable space journey, despite Elon's overly optimistic predictions. Going back once more, there is yet a significant obstacle to get over and it is called orbital refilling. Because the Starship is so large, it will require a lot of methane and oxygen fuel to get into orbit. By the time the ship reaches a stable orbit, most of the oxidizer will have been used up, meaning it won't have enough fuel to travel to the moon. As a result, the Starship will need to be refilled in space using a second Starship that will function as a tanker, which is an unprecedented maneuver. NASA is preparing for a groundbreaking cryogenic fuel transfer in space, requiring multiple sessions for a starship to reach the moon. Elon Musk predicts three or four sessions involving a tanker ship, three transport ships, and the final fuel transfer between the tanker and the lunar starship. Starship gained three noteworthy advantages due to its cargo capacity and the reality that SpaceX is constructing and testing this system in actual use right now, NASA said. SpaceX's mission depends upon an operations approach of unprecedented pace, scale, and synchronized movement of the vehicles in its architecture. This includes a significant number of vehicle launches in rapid succession the refurbishment and reuse of those vehicles, and numerous in-space cryogenic propellant transfer events. NASA's report went on to say, however, these concerns are tempered 
because they entail operational risks in Earth orbit that can be overcome more easily than in lunar orbit, where an unexpected event would create a much higher risk to loss of mission. Elon Musk has stated that SpaceX plans to test its orbital docking and refilling procedure during the first year of Starship operation. If all goes according to plan, we could see this attempted by the end of 2024, at which point we would be set for a lunar-optimized version of the Starship, which will be very different from the current design that we are seeing at Starbase. Also, there are a few features that will be needed from the Starship for this mission's success. The current HLS Starship will require a pressurized crew compartment with a life support system for astronauts to live comfortably for several days. SpaceX can scale up the life support system from the Dragon to support astronauts for up to a few weeks, with a hatch on the rocket's nose and a cargo bay below. And then that cargo section is going to also have to include an elevator lift to actually get down to the surface of the moon. The Starship, a 50-meter-tall vessel, will have a cargo section halfway up and will use oxygen and methane tanks for flight from Earth to the moon. It will also have an extra set of thrusters for slow descent. Also, SpaceX's HLS's lunar starship must successfully complete an uncrewed test landing demonstration on the moon to qualify for Artemis III, potentially returning humans to the moon for the first time in 50 years. NASA aims to establish a permanent moon base for Mars access, requiring reliable lander vehicles for cargo transportation. NASA gave SpaceX a $1.15 billion contract on November 15th to develop an improved version of their lunar starship, which will carry out a second rudimentary lunar trip, an Option B clause from NASA and SpaceX's first HLS contract. NASA's HLS program manager announced that continuing collaboration with SpaceX through Option B Starship Lander will strengthen plans for regular lunar transportation and establishing a long-term human presence under Artemis. This will focus on developing sustainable service-based lunar landers, with the first crewed flight of Option B Starship Lander expected as early as Artemis 4. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.